What is up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. A bunch of stuff to talk about today, including, well, financial information from NVIDIA that's interesting because it does kind of point to the Nintendo Switch to still helping them out big time in their financials, as you'd assume. And we have a few other things. Kind of, it's interesting, EA is kind of pulling a 2K. There's some fun stuff here, so let's get started. So the first thing up, we are going to talk about the NVIDIA financials that they did release for their past fiscal quarter, the quarter two in their mind for fiscal year 18. And they talked about a bunch of stuff being up. Everything is up, actually. They are doing well, despite their stock still kind of falling, but more than likely it's just people playing with the stocks, buying and selling randomly. I wouldn't worry too much about that because they are reporting numbers that jumped over what analysts assume that they would be doing. So let's take a look at the charts here. So the first thing you're going to notice right away is that their GPU business, the thing that is like really their bread and butter that everyone really knows NVIDIA for, right? It's up. It, 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 it's up a lot, actually. From last year, it's up 59%. From the last quarter, it's up 21%. Below that is an interesting category, which we'll move to in a second. Uh, under, all the way at the bottom, though, gaming is up 15% quarter on quarter, 52% uh, from last year. And then really the only other big one is their data center, which uh, did not jump much quarter from quarter, but from last year, it's up 175%. Really, let's get back up to the Tegra processor business. And this is interesting because for a while, if you had been following NVIDIA like I would with these kind of financials, the Tegra processor business was extremely unpredictable. We'll say that it was not stable at all because they didn't really have a place for the Tegra processor. Now you're going to notice the quarter to quarter is not up much at all. And that's more than likely because of their contract with Nintendo. They are probably uh, locked into a certain amount of money that they are being paid every quarter for this stuff. So that makes sense. The big one you want to look at that shows how much that Tegra division has grown is when you compare it to the previous year. Last year, it's up 101%. And that is undoubtedly because of the Nintendo Switch, which harbors the Tegra processor, obviously. And they even pretty much called out Nintendo saying, yes, the Switch is what's making our Tegra business business boom. And if you're an enthusiast for low power processors, which I am really excited for the future for these things, you have to be psyched because if you take a look at how stable it is, it's going to be more interesting for NVIDIA to start investing heavily into the Tegra line. And we're going to see these little processors that do not suck up much power at all do some amazing things going forward. It's clear to me now that, yes, the Switch and NVIDIA, it was a great partnership because it's going to help either one of them. Nintendo gets the system that they want where it can be portable and docked and become a home console. You still have those visuals that trump the Wii U. Sure, they're not quite where we would want them to be with the PS4 and the Xbox One for comparison. But honestly, at this point, who knows where these Tegras go? We might be surprised in five to 10 years when we use something like, you know, a couple generations from now with the Switch. And then we kind of look over at the opposition and because of these diminishing returns with resolution, for example, I mean, really when the Switch does hit 4K, which down the road, I'm talking, you know, generations from now as a portable device, that will happen. Uh, if the Tegra continues to evolve the way it has in the past couple years with ARM evolving, we will see that. And then it's going to be interesting because, of course, they'll be focusing on 8K. Diminishing returns will come in. And we'll try to figure out what the point is at the, then of, you know, not having a system that's portable. So it's going to be very interesting going forward. I like the NVIDIA's Tegra, and I really want to see it evolve. I'm glad to see that it is now completely stable, and they have a reason to talk to investors about, hey, let's evolve these Tegras and see what else we can do with them. Either way, yes, NVIDIA is, is still a, an obscenely fast-growing business in the stock market. I wouldn't let the 6% uh, the down get anyone down at this point. Um, they easily eclipsed any analyst uh, predictions that were already high. It's just, NVIDIA is the perfect company when you look at them for extremely high expectations for them. Um, analysts set very high expectations, and then the public pretty much expects NVIDIA to crash right through that roof. They did, but again, I think some people were looking for massive numbers, despite these being great for any company. Real quick before we get to the next bit of news, um, I want to talk about something that's actually going on right now. These rumors, um, really eyewitness reports, I guess, of people in Japan right now are seeing a lot of Switch units available to retails. There are even apparently retail retailer blogs out there that are reporting, unfortunately I don't read Japanese, but they are reporting uh, higher than usual Switch stock right now. And it got me thinking because even without that, I can look back at the previous weeks and say, wow, Nintendo is really stocking the Switch more than I thought they would. And it's starting to become pretty clear that uh, Nintendo is probably going to start front-loading the Switch units. And what I mean by that is there is a certain date in mind, and I think we all know what I'm talking about, 
Mario Odyssey is going to be like Nintendo's Christmas almost, and they want to have as many Switches out before Mario Odyssey launches and then some alongside of it because that is going to be a game that will be pretty much universally accepted around the world. Games like Splatoon 2 sell well in Japan, whereas Zelda does not sell as well. But you put Mario anywhere, United States, Japan, UK, anywhere, everyone knows Mario, everyone buys Mario. The only problem they are running into is they need more switches out there. So what are they going to do? I have a feeling they're going to start front loading heavily with these switch units. We're going to see these big weeks and really reports now are saying that next week's media creates, we might be surprised with the number of switches on it. I, I, we still have to see obviously these hard numbers when they actually count them out and write them down and send them out to reports. It sounds like Nintendo is going to have a pretty big week next week as well, despite things like Splatoon 2, for example, starting to cool off. So Interesting. I have a feeling we may get to December and they might already be to their 10 million, maybe even 11 million mark at that point. And they'll just put out whatever they have left for December and then start back over in January. Interesting stuff. I'm now very much looking forward to next week's media crates to see what happens here. Next up, we have news from Microsoft for the Xbox One. It's something I've been kind of looking forward to, uh, to a degree, because I think it does present creativity in the gaming space, which is something that I really think gaming needs. That's one of the reasons I'm, I'm really a big fan right now of a lot of the indie games that have come out. And Right now, they are having a, a new option available. So you can go on there and check it out now. It's called the Xbox Live Creators Program. It launched yesterday, so you can go check it out now. And what they're doing is they're allowing people uh, really, I guess, very, we're talking like smaller than indie developers. We're talking like one person who's developing a game. They can self-publish now on this unique tab. So it's not related to Xbox Live, for example. These people who are making these games cannot do things like uh, affect your gamer score. They can't play on Xbox Live. All of that needs to be curated kind of through Microsoft and then go through their really I guess they're the next tier up for the creators program this is like kind of like the beginners creator program so if you have a game and you're developing it you can put it on there even if it's unfinished and get feedback and this is kind of exciting because now we're going to see all kinds of uh, really wacky and crazy ideas a lot of very amateur stuff that's obvious you're gonna have to sift through some stuff to really see anything that has I guess some serious talent behind it but I do like that people are going to I guess attempt to make Make these games it, it could be cool you never know what idea someone might have but they're not professional level programmers for example we might see some cool stuff the only thing that's kind of bothered me a little bit is that you can charge for a game that may not be finished from what I'm seeing. Like they showed the video, people were talking about it. They were like games that were like a dollar, you know, a dollar 49, stuff like that. And yes, I understand they could sell it, but because it's not heavily monitored, I think you're gonna see a lot of junk on there that may try to take advantage of this. So it's going to be interesting if they do end up policing this at all, uh, just in case people try to really put stuff out that gets a dollar and they maybe they name it something that's uh, infringing on a copyright just to get downloads and then by the time the person has paid a dollar, they're not going to fight the system and get their dollar back. They're just going to move on. I'll be interested to see that. I, I hope it doesn't come to that. I hope people use this correctly and really put games out that they that are complete, that are fun, and they get a dollar for, or games that are unfinished, that are free, looking for feedback and, and actual constructive criticism. And when you know it, the, the one game I'm looking forward to a lot right now is Sonic Mania. It's out soon. It's only, what, four days or something like that? It's already being leaked all over the place, apparently. So it's happening, and you know what? I'm going to go there and check myself today. Best Buy is apparently selling these special edition Sonic Manias. They're just out on store shelves. There's pictures of them out there. People are at home streaming the game right now. And there's not much to spoil, so it's not like the worst leak in the world. Obviously, if I turn on a stream, it's going to be Sonic being played. It's not like there's some big, you know, story, some big twist at the end or something. So it's not like a big deal to me. But it, it's, it's a game I want to play. Maybe I will really go to Best Buy and see if I can slip one by the cashier with this thing and, and see if they'll sell it to me. Um, this, by the way, the collector's edition looks awesome. It really does. And it comes with a digital code. It doesn't actually come with a physical copy of the game. So these codes are activated and they, and they work. As long as you have the code, people are getting review copies of it now. I know a lot of times though, it is registered locked. So there is a street date in place that they cannot break because the register won't let them break it. But why not? We'll take a shot. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about what seems to be kind of a uh, turning the tables 
situation here. So if you don't remember, a long time ago, I say a long time ago, it was like 12 years ago, but uh, a while ago, there was another football game. There was Madden and there was 2K, right? Madden did eventually buy the licensing, EA did with Madden, and that's why there's no other NFL football game. You've seen things like, uh, what was it, all, all, all Pro Football 2K8 or something like that, where they used the older legends that weren't technically licensed by NFL anymore. That's how they got around that. But for the most part, if you want football, you're buying Madden. That's it. But what's interesting here is it looks like EA has now unveiled their cover athlete, one for NBA Live 18, which the cover doesn't look very good from what I'm seeing. It, it's kind of weird looking, but uh, the cover athlete is James Harden from the Rockets. That's fine. What's interesting here, though, is they're going to offer a discount for anyone who just pre-orders the game, and it's $40 instead of $60 if you order ahead of time. And why am I bringing up the old football games? Well, back in the fall of 2004, because Madden always puts out, you know, the year ahead of time, uh, there was Madden 2005 and NFL 2K5, two games that were going you know, against each other. Competition was, was fierce at the time, and this was going to end up being 2K's last game because, of course... Uh, EA Madden, they were signing with the NFL for the exclusive rights to it. Well, NFL 2K5 decided to just put it at $20. That was it. <laughs> they undercut the competition big time. 2 2K5 was 20 bucks. Here's Madden at $50. Yeah, that, that was one of the games for 50 bucks. Either way, $20, $50. It was a big deal at the time because a lot of people still regard 2K5 as a premium game when it comes to football games, and it was less than half the price. While this time with uh, basketball, it's not half the price, it's still a third, two-thirds of the price, so it is a significant cut down. And then I don't know how it's going to work with Best Buy's uh, gamer program where they take another 20% off. I don't know how that works. I'll have to check. But that could potentially give you the game at $32, which is basically half the price of the competition. So this is interesting. It's almost like 2K and, and EA are obviously on different sides. EA looked back and they were like, well, that worked for 2K in a different genre, sports, but, you know, football. Let's try it in basketball because Live has been playing catch-up for a long, long time now. So you know what? Let's see what happens. Oh, and if you're still, like, on the fence about Live, they are releasing a demo today for free. So you can at least download it, try it out, see how the mechanics play. And if you maybe like those mechanics more than 2K, you could save some money, get it for 40 bucks. And remember, they also have the WNBA in there, so technically extra players and everything that 2K does not have. If you're more about the WNBA along with the NBA, eh, it could be interesting. And that's it for News Wave today. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know what you think about anything we talked about today, whether it is the NVIDIA financial situation uh, being good, obviously, and the fact that the Nintendo Switch is really propping up that Tegra division, right? But without the Switch, the Tegra division would still be kind of like, uh, I mean, it would definitely be the weakest division that NVIDIA has when it comes to growth or just money in general, whereas now they're making over $300 million per fiscal quarter that they're showing here, which means they're on track to probably get a billion dollars out of their Tegra division overall by the end of the year, thanks to mostly the Switch and then some other other devices, but obviously the Switch is the big deal there. Also, I mean, I think about the, the EA and 2K situation where EA has kind of flipped it on its side and it's, it's EA cutting their price down rather than what 2K did back, you know, over a decade ago. That's it for now, guys. I'll see you on Monday.